Hello, God bless everyone. The Holy Spirit told me to be uh, teaching again. Um, I just want to share something very important. And uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I come to you. I humble myself. I lift you up today, Lord. The glory belongs to you alone. Uh, give me words to say. Anoint uh, whoever is listening will hear this message and anoint the one that will speak to your word um this is a bible teaching anoint me oh father god in jesus name i pray amen okay uh god is not a god of confusion the holy spirit told me to just share this one of the requirement there's only one requirement of salvation you must be born again in, in water and spirit you must be born again now water the word of God in spirit and and when you become born again born again means you uh, you go into kind of looking at the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ recognizing him as your Lord and Savior accepting him as your Lord and Savior and 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 accepting him what he has done at the cross by changing you into a new creation and you become born again you become uh, you enter into the family of God and if you decide to get baptism water baptism you can do so and it's, um, it's stuff like that so walking into his will that disregarding uh, your old nature uh, what does it say on 2 Corinthians 5 verse 12 if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away what does it mean that your old nature pass away so if you are if you are uh if you are uh what do you call this your old things like let's say you, if you're a liar before you don't want to lie anymore if you're smoking before you don't want to smoke if you're drinking before you don't want to drink if you're committing sexual immorality you don't want to do that anymore because you're married to christ you become born again you are a new creature because in ephesians 2 verse 8 you believe what he has done at the cross we are saved by grace don't stop there we're saved by grace a lot of saints just say i'm saved by grace don't stop yes you're saved by grace through your faith through your faith you are saved by grace through your faith what is your faith your faith that you believe on the lord our lord jesus christ as your lord and savior savior to to maintain um to maintain uh his kingdom his holiness and to believe what he has finished at the cross what he has finished why he has to die for our justification of our sins uh his finished work is his, his your sins had been washed away past present and future sins has been done so we're, we're gonna move up we're gonna see the bible um the bible uh the bible has to answer all our questions regarding about our salvation and what is it that okay uh, if we're saved how come we still sin every day how come we still sin every day that's the question so let me go to romans chapter 6 okay go to romans chapter 6 i have my bible so i'm just reading the bible today let the word of god answer all these questions romans chapter 6 it says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall you continue in sin so that the grace of God keep continuing to cover you? God forbid, God forbid means, means no. How shall we that are dead to sin, dead to sin? Dead to sin means we are dead as sinner. We, all of us were born sinners because of the sin of adam and eve when you were a baby you were born of on your mother's womb you were born sinners you were born sinners but uh you're born sinners but he said but jesus christ took our sins away at the cross that's why he died for our justification how shall we say, uh, how, how shall we that are dead to sin i'm reading my bible any kind of version you can read it dead to sin dead to sin you are dead to sin to sin we, he did not redeem you for sinning you can sin if you want to but you are dead to sin he redeemed you to be a a sinner you no longer a sinner if you're born the, the day that you become born again 
You believe what he has done. You are dead to sin. Live any longer therein. He did this once and for all to all men. All, uh, all salvation, we are all entitled to say to, to get saved. But not all men are saved. Only those who believe. Know ye need that so know ye not, verse three, that so many of us were baptized, past tense, into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So we are to gather into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in newness of life so if you're born again you're walking in newness of life the old man you is no long is so is already dead it says there before chapter six i think if you read them chapter seven uh, chapter 7 of Romans chapter 7 there's what you call a woman who was a husband if the old uh, the, the he, he she can only marry if the first husband is all is is uh, passed away and then she can only marry if the if, if her, or old or, or, or um, her first husband pass away so it, it because she's bound by the law so now we, if that the law that was written we are following the law of moses because jesus christ didn't come yet but jesus christ came already now we are married to his covenant it says here that we are baptized verse 5 even also we should walk in newness in life so if newness in life means you it's new you you don't walk you don't be a sinner anymore for if we have been planted together in the likeness of death we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this that our old man is crucified so paul is talking about our old nature here our old our old man as a sinner knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed henceforth we should not serve sin okay therefore you should not serve sin for he that is dead, dead is freed from sin he that is dead is freed from sin so in other words do you believe that that you are freed from sin by our lord jesus christ so if you're free from sin the moment you become born again you don't want to sin you don't want to go there and rob bank anymore to do sexual immorality and fornication i know you're gonna ask me but sin but but sis we still sin every day what if by mistake by mistake i lied what if i what if i had lied on my resume that i'm a call I, I, I put there a college graduate but i'm not a college graduate what if i did this what if i cursed my neighbor what if i what if i say bad things against my husband so many things but a sin is sin okay sin is sin but the, the, the these are but but if you're born again authentic born again you don't want to commit sin because it, what's that what does it say in first john 3 verse 9 let's read that first john 3 verse 9 said that uh let's read that okay I, I don't want to make a mistake or anything first john 3 verse 9 said that uh let's start the verse 8 he that commits sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for he sin remained in him and he cannot sin because he is born of god in this children of god are manifest you will know the children of the devil and whoever doeth not the righteousness is not of god neither he that loveth not his brother the in this in the in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil you will know so if you are a child of god you're born of god you don't want to sin so how come you're sinning every day how come you still fornicating you still uh, uh, looking at the uh, the woman in the last little way then you have to renew your mind you have to renew your are you born again or carnal 
That's my question. If you're if you carnal, then you have to rebirth yourself again, reborn again. Because you once you are you are sinning, that's unbelief. That's a rebellion to what Jesus has done. You did not believe of what he has done. What does it say in uh, if you sin willfully? Uh, I think I believe that, that was Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see Hebrews. I, I believe Hebrews 8. Let's go Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8, if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken. Hebrews 8. Um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, or Hebrews 10, somewhere. Hebrews 9, uh, Hebrews 9, Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, verse 26. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth, the truth is the word of God. After you receive the knowledge of truth, the truth is Jesus Christ who saved you from all unrighteousness. There remained no more sacrifice for sins. So if we sin willfully, what does it mean? It don't mean that you're going to the lake of fire. If you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice of sin. You have to, to look at it. Bible interpret uh, scriptures itself. Okay, so it says that if you sin willfully, after you know the truth of the word of God, you know that, that Jesus Christ saved and you're already saved and they're still sinning, there remained no more sacrifice for sins. It means you did not believe what he has done for you. You're waiting for another savior to save you who will die again for you. So that, uh, that, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a slap on the face of Jesus, right? Um, Hebrews, um, let's go to Hebrews 8. Look at Hebrews 8. Uh, let me read this Hebrews 8, okay? So we read that on, cha on Romans chapter 6 that we are dead to sin it means that you are dead you are dead as a sinner he did not redeem you for sinning you can sin if you want to he gave us the free will but you are dead to sin if you're dead to sin he did it once and for all and you believe that you become born again you are you don't want to sin you are you don't like you you don't like to 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 frustrate the grace of God, you don't want to. You don't want to insult Him. What He has done for you. What He has done for you. You you mean to say that after you become born again? Oh, I'm just a human being. I I could be. I, I fornicate today. What kind of born again is that? Then you're not born again. You have to renew your mind again. Don't, don't, don't conform into this standard of this world. But but renewing your mind. That's what the, the Bible say, right? And renewing your mind. You have to renew it again. But look at Hebrews 8. Uh, let me just read Hebrews 8. It says there that, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Before we go that, let's uh, let's read on Romans, uh, said, uh, Romans 7. Uh, there's something I want to read it. it. In, in something like Hebrews 10, it, Hebrews 10, I think it be, it's, it's somewhere in Hebrews 10 or 11, uh, Hebrews 10, I, I write it down, Hebrew, I have Hebrews 8, I have Hebrews 10, uh, verse 26, verse 26, uh, verse 10, verse, Hebrews 10, verse 10, by which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. For which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He looked at us righteous. He saved all mankind, not only not only me, all mankind saved them. The only thing is the unbelief. That's why they are not saved. They, they're not looking at the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. You go from sin to sin. You sinning, you keep sinning, and you claim that you're born again, but you're sinning? Come to think of it. Yeah, we make mistakes. We're still human beings here. But what do we do when we make a mistake? We're going to go in there for a few minutes, okay? By which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all once and for all and i think he, he already said to, to hebrews uh, 7 verse 27 who needed not daily as those high priests to offer a sacrifice first of his own sins therefore peoples for this he did it once when he offered himself he's not gonna die again don't wait for another savior to save you 
Don't wait for another Savior to save you. I think it, uh, we go to Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Colossians 1 verse 10. Uh, verse Colossians 1 verse 13. I know I mark everything here on my Bible. Colossians 1 verse 13. Th verse 13. And you being dead in your sins, you're dead in sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh had quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. And you being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh had quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses trespasses iniquities he forgiven all our trespasses what does it mean he has forgiven your sins past present future if he didn't do that then if he did not forgive your future then he has to die again if he did not forgive your your, your past sins then he has to die again and and the present and the present sin but he said having forgiven you all trespasses if he, if he if he has to do it he has he has to do it once. It is. He said it is finished. All sin had been atoned at the cross. Past, present. If you, if you, if you, if you sin again, then um, and if, if you keep it, it disrupt your the the the, the 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 whatever he has done at the cross. If you doubt, if you have unbelief, so he had he had forgiven all. Uh, you are dead in your sin you are dead in your sins but you are not dead in sinning you can sin you are not dead in sin you can sin but he gave you a free will but once you're born again you believe what he has done you're a changed person you're a new creation you don't want to sin and you believe you are dead to sin he did it to all mankind but not all mankind are saved to those who believe to those who receive him as a lord and savior to have to those who have relationship with him okay get that okay so let's go let's go back to romans 6 the one that i'm reading in romans in romans 6 uh, uh let's go let's uh uh romans 6 yes we we'll go back there romans 6 okay so uh he said for sins shall not have dominion over you, because for she, sins shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace, under the law. Because you, under the law, if you're under the law, you will look at your sin. You cannot make it. You cannot follow the law of Moses. There are 613 laws, you can, including the Ten Commandments. You cannot follow it. You know why? Because you're not perfect like God only the, the the law of moses the law commandments of god they're perfect and holy you are not perfect and holy like god that's why he comes here on earth to save us because you cannot make it he put the law so that people realize he put the law so that the people will realize that they need a savior and they cannot make it and, th and then you go to chapter 7 talking about the woman who was uh, a husband uh, he's not gonna she's not gonna marry until a new husband until until the, until the husband w will die and she's gonna marry the new husband and the new husband right now is our Lord Jesus Christ okay so now uh, okay now it says there if you keep going but now we are delivered from the law that being dead we're in, we were held that we should serve newness in spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. In the newness of his spirit, you're delivered. Newness of his spirit, Jesus Christ lives in you. Christ in me. What makes you a born again Christian? Christ lives inside of you. You don't want to do things that will that will uh, that will frustrate the grace of God. We're saved by grace through faith. What shall uh, uh, we say then? Verse seven and um, um, Romans seven verse seven. God, uh, is the sin is, is the law sin? God forbid. No, I have not known sin, but by the law. For I have not known lust except by the law that so thou shalt not call that. And then the sin taking occasionally commandment wrought manner concupiscence without the law sin was dead. Without the law, sin was dead. I was alive without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, occasion, or taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me and slew me. So Paul is trying to say, 
when there was a commandment, I, I die. I cannot follow it. I cannot follow it. But when uh, Jesus Christ came, when there was no law, then uh, I leave. I leave. That's what he's saying. Now he, he went through here that he, he looked at this, this nature. An old nature would say, he, he followed what, what I want to do. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So to which I do, I do, I do, I, to which I don't want to do, I want to do it. To, to which I want to do, I don't want to do it. That is a sinful nature. Why is it saying that? Can you relate to that? Yeah, it can relate me. That's what Paul said, that he has also, he has also a uh, weakness. No, that's not the way. What he's trying to say, if he has that old nature, if he's not born again, if he's not called by Jesus Christ in the road of Damascus, then he has this old nature. If the law is still alive, then he has this old nature. What he wants to do, he don't want to do it. What he don't want to do, he's doing it. It means he is carnal. So you being carnal, carnal if you're not dead to sin but we are all dead to sin but what what does it take it takes uh, saved by grace through your faith it takes faith to receive that so that that you know that you are dead to sin jesus christ took your sins away past present and future and i read it all trespasses he has forgiven our sins okay the, uh, 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 Remember that. Now let's go to Romans 6 verse 7. Did I read that one? Yes, yeah, says we are delivered from the law. So now, now we're saying, like I said, if you look at it, Paul is trying to say, you have to read the context. Paul is trying to say that when there was a law, he became carnal. When there was a commandment, he he has no law, but, but thou shalt not covet. This from the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not this, this. Uh, but he was alive without the law, without the law. So without, with, uh, but Jesus Christ came to replace, to fulfill the law. So now he has a new nature. If he is an old nature, if he has a, a, a sinner, an old nature is a, being a sinner. That's an identification. Then whatever, what, he become carnal. That, that's, uh, he has, that is weakness when he is carnal. But he no longer under the law. <laughs> that the answer he is not longer under the law it is not true that just because i have weakness i'm still human being i can sin yes you are free for sinning but once you are born again i'm i'm talking about authentic born again if you're authentic born again you do not commit sin would you go out there and just and just and just steal and just rob a bank? Would you go there and kill people? And, and shut somebody? And fornicate and do sexual immorality? If you're born again? It says, God forbid, we are dead to sin. Who would do that? Those are unbelievers would do that. Those who don't understand the gospel truth, the gospel of Christ would do that. But you as born again, you cannot sin. Then how come we made a mistake each day? Like I have a question, I have example. You have a resume and you put there your college graduate, but you're not a college graduate. That's lying, right? That's a lie. Then, 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 then what can we do then? Do, do we have to repent over and over again? Repent of our sin? Confess? We, we, when you, when you, when you have a, 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 a misunderstanding with your husband or your wife, you talk together. We confess what you have done. Oh, I spent all the money. I'm sorry. Yeah. The same thing with our Lord. You, you can, you can confess it to Him. But let let's look at the first John because this is uh, first John, um, first John. Where is that? First John, first John one, first John one. Let's go to first John one. Let's go. First John one. This is now the 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 twisted thing that the Christians are confused on First John one. That's why you keep repenting every minute. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. But he has forgiven you past, present, and future of your sins. Okay, John John one. Okay, John one. Let's go to John one. First John, not not John one. 
first john if i'm not mistaken i hope i got that first john first john first john one okay i'm here first john one verse three Verse 3 first, First John 1 verse 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. First of all, John, John is talking about if you, an individual, don't recognize that you are a sinner, if, you're, if you don't recognize that you have no sins, then you are you say, you're deceiving yourself. All of us are sinners. Who who wouldn't recognize that they are they are they are sinner? Who wouldn't recognize that they are they are not sinner? I mean, who would recognize that they are not sinner? The unbelievers. They don't want to accept that they're sinning. They don't want to accept that they're sinning. The unbelievers. And, and, and let's let's keep going. Chapter chapter one verse three. John first uh, John one verse three. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also ye also may have fellowship with us because he's born again. John knows about our Lord Jesus Christ. He has a relationship that you may have also fellowship with us and through our fellowship with the Father with His Son Jesus Christ. Also declare to you that ye also may have fellowship with us. May also. Who is talking? Is he talking to uh, believers? No. Uh, believers have fellowship already. Oh, already. May also. He's talking to unbelievers. The one that don't believe that Jesus Christ didn't come from flesh. The one that don't recognize that they are sinning. These are unbelievers. So he said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. He said, who would say that I have no sin? The unbelievers. But we believers recognize that we are sinner and we have sinned. We were sinner. Okay, well, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, we already confess our sins 2,000 years of, I mean, be, before you become born again. Before you become born again, you already repented what, what, and, and recognized that Jesus Christ uh, 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 ransomed you. All your trespasses, you're ready. But if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, S-I-N-N-E-D, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So who would recognize that they're not sinner? Who would recognize that they're not sinner? These are the unbelievers. They don't recognize that they are, they, they, they won't recognize that they are sinner. But we recognize that we were once sinner, we born again. We were once sinner and we're no longer sinner because we are dead to sin. Okay, now verse 2, chapter 2, uh, verse Gen 1, verse chapter 2. My little children, now he's talking to the believers. He's talking now to the believers. These things I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous. And, and he is the propitiation, prop, propitiation for our sins and not ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. So he died for our sins. This is the real love of Christ. He is the propitiation for our sins. He became the sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. He is the ultimate sacrificial lamb. That is how much he loves us. So if we sin, I write unto you that ye sin not. He don't want you, he's trying to say, I'm writing unto you born again, you sin not. If any man sin, he didn't say, if you sin, if any man sin, we have an advocate, the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So if you sin, if you made a mistake, let's say you lied by mistake. If you that, that you call that sin, we live it for we still flesh. But but you got you have to say, Father, I know I lied to the today. Oh, I'm sorry, I lied. Help me, help me to walk in your righteousness every day. I am the righteousness of God into you. You gave me your righteousness. Help me, Lord, to live rightfully in your in your word every day. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Show me the way so that I can live right in this world. You don't have to say, 
Father, forgive me. I I, I sin again. Father, forgive me. I sin again. Father, forgive me. I sin again. I already did. Then he's gonna answer you. I already did. Your past, present, and future sin. I already did. Why are you still asking? Then what I have done is useless. Then I didn't die just like that. I didn't. Die, I didn't die for nothing. That's what he's gonna say to you. But when you when you made a mistake, I'm talking about mistake. Not going and rubbing the bank. Then you sin when you rub the bank or you you go in there again and fornicate, have sexual immorality. Then you're not authentic born again. You need to reborn again. You need to reborn, renew your mind. You need to reborn again. You don't understand what's the meaning of born again. But if you made a mistake, you say a curse to your neighbor. I said, oh, Father, I curse my neighbor. But Lord, help me not to do that again. Help me. Uh, help me not to do that again. I'm sorry, Lord. But Lord, I know I'm the righteousness of God. Let's say, let's say there is there is a beer here, a wine. Uh, uh, you 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 drink a little bit, and you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul is saying your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He didn't say that. Um, he, 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 he's not condemning anyone. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you can just say that, Lord, help me to walk in your righteousness. I am born again. I shouldn't do that. Help me, Lord. It, it reminds you that Jesus Christ purchased your sin. It reminds you who Jesus is. When you don't want to sin, you dislike sinning. You hate sin. If you're authentic, born again. If you're authentic, born again. You hate sinning. Um, let me go to John 19. John 19. John 19 verse 30. It says, it is finished. So when you say it is finished, do you have to finish it again? It is finished. He finished it all. He, 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 put, he, he ran some years sin. He took the, the judgment. He took the punishment. He, he, he took, the judge said you are condemned to die. But he said, I'll just take that punishment. Just, I'll, I'll die for them. I'll die for them. I'll just take the punishment of death. So that they will be with me. So he saved all mankind. The only thing is that everyone saved. To those who, are, to, to those who believe only and believe on the finished work. So the, 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 uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He said, yeah. But when you're fearing, he's saying that, oh, I sin. I fear God. I fear, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I might go to the hell. I might go to hell because I made, uh, I made, I committed sin. I committed sin. I lied today. I cursed my neighbor. Oh, I fear. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to hell. Then you are fearful. It says in, in um, the Revelation 21. Is it Revelation 21? I think so. It says that the fearful person like fearful and I'm believing will go to the lake of fire. I'm believing and believing. Once you you don't believe oh, oh, on the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ, you be, you don't believe that you 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 have been forgiven. He said you are forgiven. If you don't believe it, then you are a believer, believers in Christ. It's, it's, it, 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 it is blinded. It is Satan who blinded. You have to remember, Satan knows the word of God. He knows the word of God. It's implanted to you. You have to ask forgiveness. You are the righteousness of God. You cannot sin. And if you made a mistake, you just say, Father, help me to, to, uh, to help me with my, with my unbelief. Help me with my weakness. Help me, Lord, so that I will not I will not hurt my neighbor with words or something. Help me, Father God. I believe that you have forgiven my sin, past, present, and future. I am the righteousness of God. Later on, it will just disappear. It will just disappear, and you and you you will walk into His righteousness. Hallelujah. Uh, what else I did tackle here? Uh, let's go back to uh, to Romans chapter seven. I already did chapter seven. Romans chapter. Seven. Uh, already did that. Okay. So, so Paul is trying to say that he he cannot. He what he wants to do, he cannot do it. What he wants, what he what he don't want to do, he will do it. If he's carnal, 
if he is carnal, that's what happened. But we are dead to sin. And when he was called in the road of Damascus, I don't think he, Paul wants to sin. Do you think we, if Jesus Christ, he saw Jesus Christ and still wants to sin? He revealed the gospel to him. Whatever Paul preached, that's the real gospel. There's no other gospel. What Paul preached is the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, uh, that is the, what Paul preached. Preach. Let's go to Colossians 2. Let me see Colossians 2. I think I didn't do it yet. Colossians 2, chapter 13. I already did that. Okay, verse 20. It says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from rudiments of the world, why is the living in the world? You're subject of ordinances. So if you're dead to sin, from, which Jesus Christ uh, redeemed you, why are you living in the world? You're a subject of ordinance, touch not, taste not, handle not. Verse 21, which are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things have indeed shown wisdom, will worship and humility, neglecting the body, not in any honor that's satisfying of the flesh. So if you live in flesh, flesh won't do that to you. It's contrary to the spirit. The flesh and spirit are contrary. I'm a spirit being. We born again are spirit being. The spirit of Christ lives in us. That's why. The, uh, the, let's go to Romans chapter 8. There's something I want to read on Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Verse 30. It says there, there. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, whom he called, them he also justified, on whom he justified, if them also glorified. Whoever he predestinated, we are predestinated as children of God, he also called, whom he called, then he also justified, on whom he justified, them also be glorified. We are justified, period. Justified means we are counted righteous in his sight at the cross 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, okay, 2,000 years ago. So that's why it says in Colossians and, and Ephesians, uh, you, you are forgave one another because Jesus Christ has forgiven you. Oh, there's something I, I, I forgot on, on 1 John because we, I, we were reading about 1 John. We 1 John uh, 3, it, then, it says here, again, and you can send it, uh, uh, the continuation of 1 John chapter 2, Okay, it says that First uh, John two. Okay, we have the advocate of the Father Jesus Christ of the righteousness, right? And he the propitiation of our sins, not ours, also the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him. We keep his commandments. Now you go back again. Oh, sis, you told he told he told uh, John told that we have to keep the commandments. That is the law. You go back again. Now you have to read the context. What is the commandment he's trying to say here? Verse eight. 1 John 2 verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing true in him, in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. Who is the light? Jesus Christ. The darkness is past, and the true light now is shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hated his brother in darkness, even until now. So if you hate someone, you don't love one another, the new commandment is love one another. That's what he's trying to say. It, 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 that's what he's trying to say. You are in the darkness of you hate your brother. The darkness is past. P-A-S-D. The true light now shineth. Okay? It shineth. That, 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 that is a sin. <laughs> if you hate your brother, if you hate your brother, if you hate your brother, what if you, you hate your brother? Then you're not born again. If you hate your sister, you're not born again. You hate them. Hatred did come from God. Is this the fruit of the Holy Spirit to hate someone? You are not born again. That's why you're sinning, because you're not born again. All these things, that's why Paul said, he's carnal if he is, if he, if he, if he does what he wants to do, and whatever he don't want to do, he's doing it, then he's carnal. So understand, that's Romans chapter 7. You have to read the whole chapter to understand it. Bible interpret Bible, scriptures interpret scriptures. 
Okay, uh, there's something, Romans 8 verse 30, like I said, did, did I read that? I already read that. Um, almost everything, I read it and it, it, I'm finished with it. Uh, let's go to John 10. John 10. On John 10, this is, the, this is what it says, John 10, verse 27, verse 27 to 30. Look, verse 27 to 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, they follow me. My sheep knows my voice. My dog knows my voice. But Jesus Christ is saying, my sheep knows my voice, and they follow me. I, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never be, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. It's, it's, it's guarantee. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Because I know my sheep. I know who are authentic born again. They know my voice. Any man cannot pluck them out of my hand. My father which gave them is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. So we have eternal security that we are safe. We are safe. We, he, he, he's taking care of us. We are the sheep of his pasture. We are, we are saved and we are safe. That's an eternal belief, our faith, that we are safe on his hand. Because neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. They will never perish. Okay? He, he already said that. Now I'm going to end with this, okay? Well, uh, Romans, remember Romans 8 verse 1 said, If any man be in Christ, he's, uh, we already did that, 2 Corinthians, that, that's what I meant. Uh, in Romans 8 verse 1, if, uh, There is therefore no more condemnation to those who are in Christ. If you're in Christ, there's no more condemnation in you. They're not looking, there is, it, God is not looking at your past anymore. Oh, I have to look. I have to read Hebrews eight before before I leave. Hebrews eight. In, in Hebrews eight, look at Hebrews eight. It said, "For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. We are we are included here. Uh, the, the gospel is for is for the Gentiles and everyone else, Jews and Gentiles. After this, they say, the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them into their hearts. I will be to them God, and they shall be my people." So, uh, he wrote uh, the laws into our heart. The laws that he's talking about here is the royal law of love. The, ro the love of God is in our hearts. The royal law of the love of God and the love of others. Loving others. I will write them in their hearts and I will be to them God and they shall be my people. I will, I will put my laws into their mind and write them into our hearts. In our thoughts, in our mind, we walk in spirit, not in flesh, not in sin. Not in sin. If you're authentic, born again. Okay, verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So he will not remember your sins no more. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, their sins and their iniquities. Not only sins, but iniquities will I remember no more. It's past sins because of what he has done. So if Jesus Christ did not do a good job, he will not be resurrected. We are now sitting at the right hand of the Father together with Him in heavenly places. Whatever He has, we have it. We have authority over the enemy. Whatever as He is, and so are we in this world. That's what it says in 1 John 2, verse John, that as He is. So whatever He has, He has authority over the enemy. He is victorious, we should be. We are an overcomers also. We are sitting next to Him. He's, we are living in His Spirit. His Spirit is within us. So we cannot sin. We cannot sin. So in 1 John 1 verse 9, He is referring to those Gnostics people, those who are not unbelievers. We, we, you have fellowship, you will have fellowship also. You have to read the epilogue, what do you call the big, the introduction of 1 John before you read the uh, chapter 1, chapter 2. You will understand what John is trying to say. And then after 1 John, uh, let's go back to 1 John before I go. 1 John. In 1 John, it says there that, okay, and, and he said that, 
it keeps going. It keeps going. They uh, it said that little children. This is the last time. Verse 18, 1 John 2, verse 18. First John 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. So even now there are many antichrists whereby we know it is last time that's why he was talking on the chapter one these are the antichrists that don't believe that jesus christ came on flesh and that jesus christ was the one who took their sins uh, took the sins of mankind they went out from us but they were not us they went out from us but they were not us but if they had been us they would no doubt have continued with us and they went out and they might be made manifest that they were not all of us but we have an action from the holy one and we know all things you have an action for all you know all things so if you know all things why is still doubt why is still doubtful that your sin has not forgiven you know all things your sins has forgiven past present future all trespass he died only once and for all he's not gonna die again don't wait for another savior don't wait for another savior to come okay let me let me finish this um in in romans 5 verse 1 to 2. is this something that i forgot to read um uh, okay uh we, i think i read every, everything but being made free from sins you became the servants of righteousness it says in romans chapter 6 verse verse 18 okay and now we uh we we, we uh, there's something i want to read romans 5 i'm ending here i'm i'm good i'm good already i'm read. i'm just reading the bible i'm i'm sharing but i'm reading the bible i'm reading the context so you will understand chapter 5 therefore being justified by faith being right righteous by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of god therefore being justified by faith how do how are we justified by faith we are saved by grace through our faith we are justified by faith we are righteous by faith he gave us his righteousness we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It means peace. Peace means he's not mad at you anymore. Peace. Peace means when there is a war, they wipe their flag and say peace. It means that I will not put the punishment on you anymore because I use Jesus Christ, my only begotten son, to be a punishment of your sin. I have forgiven you your past, present, and future sins. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's about through our Lord. Lord. Jesus Christ now is the center for everything. Our salvation and everything that we do. He's the center. The problem of men is they keep, they keep repenting and repenting so that they will please God. Then the glory belongs to you. What happened to our Lord Jesus Christ who took your sins? The glory belongs to you because I repented of my sins. Uh, thank you, Lord. You have forgiven me. I did it. I did my. I did my part. I did my part. You're still walking under the law. So the, the, then, you, by whom we also have access by faith into this grace. What grace makes? Grace makes deliverance. Faith takes it. Grace makes salvation. Grace takes it. Grace makes prosperity. Yeah, prosperity comes in it. And um, uh, grace makes prosperity, and faith takes it. Grace makes healing, faith takes it. Grace makes love to all, to everyone, faith takes it. You believe it that you have the love of Christ. We stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, of the glory of God. So this is what I'm trying to say. Be, don't be doubtful. Don't be a believers and believers. Don't be a believers and believers. Do not twist the word of God because that's the work of the enemy, twisting it. If you got offended to what I'm trying to say here, it's, what does it say here? Confess one another to your brothers and sisters. That's where we confess. We confess our, our, our fault 
to one another because they are our brothers and sisters. We say sorry to them. What about God? It says, yeah, you said you said sorry to him, but repenting, how, how would you repent that your, your sins has been forgiven, past, present, and future? You talk to God. He said, I made a mistake today, Lord. Look, I read this that I'm a high school graduate, but I'm not a high school graduate. Lord, help me not to lie. Father God, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm already born again. I'm the righteousness of God. But for you to go out there and fornicate and and uh, what uh, and and deal with drugs and and uh, go with uh, gun shooting or anything, whatever that is, or anything anything that's not pleasing to God. Even lying, for you, that you keep constantly lying, you're constantly cursing, then you're not born again. You're not authentic born again. You have to reborn again. You must be born again in spirit and in water. The water, the washing, the word of God. You have to, do you have to, to reborn again. Let the spirit of God dwell in you, in your heart, in your mind. It is. It is the, the law of Moses is very dangerous. When you practice it, you are mixing the law and grace. And that is, that, that confuses you a lot. The commandments, commandments, commandments. We are dead to sin. He, he, he purchased our sin once and for all. He's not going to come back again. Okay? God bless you. I hope you understand this. God bless you. The true gospel. There's only one gospel. Whatever Paul preached, that's the real gospel. What Jesus has finished at the cross, that's the real gospel. There's no other gospel. That's the gospel of grace. That's the gospel of peace. That's the gospel of truth. Truth. He is the only truth. Jesus Christ is the only truth. The law came from Moses. That's what John 3 said. But truth and grace came from our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.